This week on Crossfeed. The Pope sticks up for Martin Luther. Seven more deadly sins. St. Patrick's Day rescheduled. Is Obama right? To stick by right? Surgeon General's warning. Crucifixion may be bad for your health. everybody welcome back to crossfeed after a couple week break it is so good to see everybody again and to be seen uh see dale over there on the other end i am pastor jim butler out in beautiful boston massachusetts and i'm pastor dale critchley pastor st paul lutheran church in delaware iowa welcome back hope everybody had a good easter hey i'm gonna tell everybody if you haven't got the chance to do it yet you have to go to youtube dale we'll put up the address right now and see his sunrise uh sermon it is a, a oh, actually <laughs> if anybody that subscribes to the video feed you already saw it uh because i put it in the video feed for the show uh and in fact you can go to just pop over to uh crossfeednews.com slash podcast and um and you'll find it there and there's a there's a video player and you can bring it up there good you, you need to see it it's, it's very creative very well done i'm very pleased we on the other hand have an outdoor sunrise service which was at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was 25 was degrees outside. Well, you actually got to watch the sun go up, though, huh? Um, well, no, because the building um, faces north and oh. south, and we're on the west side, oh, so it comes up behind us. <laughs> okay. Because, see, this year was a huge disappointment for me. The one thing I love about sunrise service, I mean, I like sunrise service. I'm a huge fan of Easter. I love going around screaming, he's risen. And, um. I thought it was the bunny costume. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's a whole other story. I got mugged by the bunny this year. I got forced into paying for mall bunny pictures. And, oh, I was irritated. They wouldn't let us use our own camera. And their pictures quality was, eh, it was all right, but. Rather just take a moment with our own camera, but uh, anyway, I always like because I, I stand outside uh, before services uh, since we have uh, service and then Bible class afterward, and so I I always stand outside and greet people as they get there, and um, and while I'm standing out there waiting for people to arrive, I watch the sunrise, and that's always something I look forward to on Easter morning. Well, this year because of the um, the change in daylight savings time, the sun, I mean, it was still dark out. The sun hadn't risen yet. And so I was really irritated. I had to stand out there in the dark, and I didn't get to watch the sunrise because of the change in the daylight savings time thing. Yeah, but it wasn't 20 degrees. Yeah, it was cold. It was 25 degrees. It was cold, and uh, the service went for about, okay, I, cut it, I, I cut it no more than a half hour because I was just freezing out there. I couldn't handle it much longer. It took me an hour to get warm again, but they, they, did you wear a coat under your robe or something? Um, I have the I have the black cloak, the black wool cloak that uh, uh that belonged okay. to uh, a previous pastor in Trinity, my last congregation, and it fit me perfectly. And um, so when I left, I offered to buy it from the church, and they gave it to me as a gift. Hmm. So it's this beautiful wool cloak. It's just you know nice and loose, and, and everybody looks at me because. I have one woman who comes to come up and goes, you look stunning in that. Or, well, or else it looks like a character from the Lord of the Rings. But, yes. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that could be true, too. Um, and, and, and you can tell Lent is over. I have a glass of wine to show everybody that Lent is over, and I'm, I can drink my wine again. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're doing good. This is Yellow so, Tail Shiraz, Yellowtail Shiraz, by the way. I really, that's a very good red wine. So if if things start out boring, just wait, because by the end it should be pretty interesting then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, listen, as long as we're talking about Easter, we might as well talk about Good Friday. Um, and this interesting uh, thing that they do in the Philippines where they have this uh, crucifixion festival, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they... Um, <clears throat> Take part in this um, crucifixion and uh, self-flagellation. Yep. You, 
this is uh this is something they do every year um and it's a, a completely a voluntary thing but it's for people that feel the the weight of their guilt uh or whatever and they'll um allow themselves to be beaten uh they flay the skin off their backs they actually use scourges on them and they crucify themselves and the uh the 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 government the filipino government is saying well if you're going to do that make sure you use a clean whip and uh clean nails and get a tetanus shot first it's like the goofiest surgeon general's warning i've ever heard you know <laughs> it's just if you if you if you nail yourself to a tree and allow somebody to strip the skin off your back, um, it might not be real healthy, you know, because you strip the skin off, it exposes all that, and then you're open to infection. So at least use a clean whip. That's like it's like telling heroin addicts use a clean needle, otherwise it could be bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it says you know, there are 23 people, including two women. I signed up to reenact the crucifixion at three improvised Gol- Golgothas around town. Four of them will use real nails. Don't know what the other names. Yeah, some of them just use ropes. Yeah, they just use ropes, but I just... It strikes me as being very... Yeah, then they have this picture here of, you know, somebody's feet nailed. It's... It just... I don't know. You know. It strikes me as just a very strange thing. Of course, you know what my favorite part of the whole story is? Is where it says it's been sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I love that. That's the that's the I thirst part. I... <laughs> Sponsored by Yellowtail, may make us a fine sure ass. Yeah, we should get them to sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just looking at this going. Well, this crucifixion has been brought to you by Coca Cola. <laughs> Next time you feel like getting beaten, remember, have a Coke. <laughs> you'll feel better. Yeah, you'll feel better. And smart telecommunications. If you're on a cross and you want to have a telephone call, what are you going to do? <laughs> Man, I can get really good reception up here on my cell phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said seven words from the cross. How many can you say? <laughs> No, they also say that... Sure, it's very weird. It's, it's better to bring self, self-prepared self foods such as sandwiches, not only to save money, but also to avoid getting diseases such as diarrhea, hepatitis A, and typhoid after eating food bought from the street vendors. Yeah. Well, that's for, that's for the tourists and spectators. Right, right, because it would be really hard to eat a sandwich if your arms are nailed to yeah. the cross. Yeah. Whoa, what was that? I don't know. It sounded like music. I don't know what that was. But, uh, no, I'm looking at this going, yeah, well, that's for the tourists and spectators. I'm like, tourists and spectators? Hi, dear. What would you do tonight? I don't know. Let's go out and see the crucifixion. But well, that sounds like a nice way. That's my idea of a date. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, hello, rent the passion if you really want to watch it. <laughs> Uh, watch, watch the old you know, uh, 1979 Jesus film. I still think that's the best movie about the life of Jesus ever made. You know, I when The Passion of the Christ came out on DVD, I bought it, and I think it's still in the shrink wrap because I can't bring myself to watch it again. I was I was going to watch it as sort of a Lent thing, you know, but <laughs> and and my wife refuses to watch it. And, I mean, I can't blame her. I went to go see it um, on Good Friday, the year it was out in the theater. And it took my son Josh to it. So Josh and I went to go see it together. And we both went out there and going, okay. <laughs> you know, we just thought, we thought some of the cinematography was beautiful. That one scene going across the pavement with the blood there. and Yeah, you know, some places had gorgeous cinematography, but... Yeah, a lot of places, like, you know, the crow putting the guy's eye out and stuff. It's just like, ick. You know, yeah. he did that. And, you know, he, he and I both came out. Some people come going, oh, that was so beautiful. That was so moving. That was so wonderful. Josh and I were going, so what is that, a theological snuff film or something? <laughs> 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 uh, 
I mean, we we, we weren't so uh, we weren't that deeply moved by it at all. But the place was packed. Oh yeah. Well, our our uh, ministerial association bought it out like for the week. Um, by donations, they bought out the theater so people could go for free. Mm. Personally, I want him to do that for Horton. Here's a who. Because uh, it's a great, um, it's a, it's a great pro-life movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, I remember you used to put All that on your sig line. Yep, I still do. It's it's one of my random sigs. That and that's a lot of people don't know that. It's a, off topic here, but um, since we don't have a story on it, Horton Here's a Who was written as a pro-life. You know, a person's a person, no matter how small, even if they're the size of a single cell. And that was Dr. Seuss's point. If you read, most of his books are actually political. Um, the Lorax is obviously environmental. Uh, Butter Battle Book's another one that's really obvious, uh, anti-nuclear war book. And um, But you can go on and on. And um, Horton Hatches the Egg is about, uh, it's a, a parenting uh, thing. It's about putting your kids in daycare and stuff like that. I mean, it's a really... You read his stuff as an adult, and you get a lot different thing out of it. But it's it's really interesting to see it. Horton Hears a Who in the in the theaters and big names attached to it and stuff. Probably people that don't realize what it's really about. Okay, well, if you're someone's only talking about Theodore Geisel, he was, of course, from Springfield, Mass. He was a non-observant Jew. His family was all non-observant Jews. And so he used to come to the German dinners at Trinity Lutheran Church. Oh, really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you buy, if you read the his biography, uh, Mr. Geisel and Dr. Seuss, um, Trinity Lutheran Church is mentioned in there because we were, we were one of the three centers of German culture in Springfield. Huh. Cool. So that's... Uh, that's our connection with him. So, uh, so anyway, back to the, the right. this crucifixion thing. I think the thing that bothers me the most about it, even more than you know, people like getting flayed alive, um, is this whole idea that there's somehow that this is a penitence thing that that you're um, somehow atoning for your sin this way. Like they're missing the whole point of the crucifixion. The whole reason that Jesus was crucified is so that we wouldn't have to be. So, yep. you know, like, not only is this a horrible, painful thing, it's completely pointless. That was pointless. And in fact, it's a direct contradiction of what they're reenacting. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, throughout um, church history, there have been, you know, things like this, the, the, the crucifixions, the flagellations, uh, Saint, um, yeah, Saint Bernard of Clairvaux used to have a um, piece of wire, and he would push it up against himself. At any time he thought he was having too much pleasure, he would push it up against himself to feel pain. Yeah, you know, like, um, but you know, I, I, it's really not that different in a way from from holiness churches, where you know you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this, and you know anything that's that 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 uh, does it contribute to your spiritual life needs to go. Oh, good grief! Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Same song, different verse. Yeah, we're in trouble. Yeah. So. Now, at least the Roman Catholic Church has um, that they're against doing this. Right. They uh, it's it's frowned upon by the church authorities. So. So that that also begs the question of why people are doing it. <laughs> like, well, if the Bible doesn't say you should do it, and the church authorities don't say you should do it, why are you doing it? Well, because they feel deeply moved to. And, uh, and so... <clears throat> but uh, not something I would do or take part in, but... Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, well, let's talk about that other great celebration day that came up during um, Holy Week this year. Let's talk about St. Patrick's Day. 
Now, living a- outside of Boston, you know, one of the heavily, you know, heaviest Irish populations in the country, this was actually a big issue this year. Oh yeah, it was. It was, yep. and one of the largest um, St. Patrick's Day parades in the country is takes place in Holyoke, Mass, and uh, First Lutheran Church in Holyoke is right on the parade route. So every year they have to cancel their second service on uh, on, on parade day. Of course, that would have been Palm Sunday this year. So they, they although one year actually the, the um, Palm Sunday was this, uh, uh, St. Patrick's was the week before Palm Sunday. They actually did have to cancel the, uh, their second service on Palm Sunday because of uh, the parade that afternoon that day. So uh, a little familiar with this kind of stuff and what it brings up because of that. Uh, but this year, because um, Easter was so early, matter of fact, the next time Easter will be this early will be the year 2160, the year I turn 200. <laughs> you uh, have plans to celebrate? <laughs> I figure I'll still be preaching. <laughs> The way Social Security is going, I'm never going to be able to retire. Anyway. <laughs> well, there's that. So uh, here's but, here's uh, Saint Patrick from the Veggie Tales. But just to let you, but yeah, but that is the, the to let you know that that's the next time it's uh, the year 2160, and um, so. But and they had this issue that they had to deal with this year. Oh, I got to tell you this. Okay, this is off the topic a little bit, but you know. Easter was very early this year. So this guy was asking my, my, my daughter Kelly at Walmart, you know, one of her co-workers. This guy's about 35, 40 years old. I asked him, I wonder why it's, why it's early this year. You know, generally, you know, in April, isn't it? You know, and, and, and my daughter looks and goes, it's because it's a, it's a lunar holiday. To which she replies, I thought it was a religious day. <laughs> She's like, well, it is, but it's it's based on the cycle. It, it it's based on the cycles of the moon when it falls. And we have a solar calendar, which is based on the sun, and so the two don't always quite match up, and so it tends to move. But it's still religious, isn't it? You know, there was another story this week that so, I didn't So, that tells pick, you about the quality of people that, who work at Walmart. <laughs> Most people in Britain believe in the resurrection. <laughs> Americans were clueless. <laughs> These ones working at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> or Walmart, you know, Boston. So, Here in Iowa. Northampton. That's Northampton. North 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 okay. So anyway, back to this so, uh, thing. So, so a lot of these uh, groups, uh, and a lot of them aren't uh, necessarily religious groups anyway, by the way, uh, but like the Hiberians in, in uh, New York, uh, the Irish groups here in, in um, Boston and other places, they really, you know, struggled with, you know, what do we do? Do we have this big parade on, uh, and, and the green beer and everything on uh, Holy Week? Uh, and a lot of places, you know, we're really struggling with that. No, we don't want to do that. And so a lot of places then wind up uh, moving it to like the week before. Well, they moved it to March 14th, the, fri- the previous Friday, right? But I looked at that and went, okay, well, first of all, my uh, Teresa and I were talking, my wife and I were talking about it and um, about the, the change in the date. And, and our kids were like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, the, the Pope decided that, um, to move St. Patrick's Day because our, um, my brother-in-law, his birthday is on the 17th. And so we're like, oh yeah, his birthday, you know, for the first time ever is not on St. Patrick's Day. And, um, and so the, they're like, what are you talking about? We said, well, they decided to move St. Patrick's Day because it's on, uh, it's during Holy Week and they, a lot of people like to go out and get drunk on St. Patrick's Day, and they didn't want people doing that during Holy Week. And they're like, oh, so it's okay if they go get drunk a different time? <laughs> like, 
yeah, exactly. You know, on the on the Friday before. And and then what's the traditional meal on uh St. Patrick's Day? Corned beef and cabbage. Which you can't eat on Friday if you're a Roman Catholic. <laughs> oh yeah, you can. That there was since Vatican too. They took the, they, they threw the meat wrap out in Vatican too. They're still well, going to the going, man, I'm still burning time on this meat wrap. And now they changed the rules on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, told me that. Guess what? My kids, my kids still hate Lent because they can't get meat on the school lunch menu because, um, on Fridays. <laughs> Really? In fact, in fact, my um, now 10-year-old had her birthday party during Lent and had a bunch of friends over on a Friday night, and we did make-your-own-pizzas, and half of the kids had cheese pizzas. And, and we forgot to check the menu. They had cheese pizzas for lunch, too. <laughs> Nobody complained, but it was kind of ironic. That ends up happening a lot around here. We have the same thing for supper that they had for lunch. But um, they... Yeah, so like we we cooked up a whole bunch of sausage, you know, for the for the pizzas, and because we got these these little crusts, you know, little mini ones, and uh, and and we, we cooked up all this sausage, and then we didn't need it because half of the kids were, she had there were like six kids and half of them were Catholic and so they couldn't eat the sausage. That's so yeah, if they threw that out, it's not widely known. I'm not sure some of the Catholic people up here would, would care. Maybe it's different during Lent, but it, um, you know, during, um, <clears throat> but during the rest of the year, no, it's, it's perfectly okay to do well, that. Well, no, I'm just doing Lent. Okay. But yeah, okay, so yeah, they moved it and, you know, killed the corned beef and cabbage for these people, but, you know, well, that's better than anything else. You know, it's, it's, but you know, it's, it's not really a saint's day anymore. No, it's not. You know, it's, it's like Valentine's Day, right? And we uh, talked about that back in February. But a couple of, you know, some of the, you know, a couple of them. One of them said that, well, you know, the local bishop didn't say anything, so we're going to go ahead and do it anyhow. Go ahead, make my day. So there's this guy walking. The Irishman walks into an Irish, Irish pub in the town, and he orders three beers. Okay, no, drinks, drinks and then he orders three more. And then he leaves and comes back the next night. He orders three beers. And he does this every night. And so the guy looks and says, what's, what's going on? He says, oh, he says, I have two brothers. One's in America and one's in Australia. And, and we always agreed that whenever we ordered beer, we always would order three beers. That way we always remember them, you know, each other. And we have this bonding. And everybody thought that was really cool. You know, he and his brothers doing this and stuff. And, uh, so he did this all the time, and people would talk about him and his, his three beers and his brothers and ask him how they were doing. And then he came in one time and he ordered two. And everybody was like, oh no. And he drank his two. And he, you know, next time he came in and he ordered two, and the bartender got him with a heavy heart and now it's two. And then the third night, he ordered two. And the bartender gave him, he says, look, he's around the house. He says, we're awesome. I'm very sorry for you. Says our condolences, you know, you've lost your brother. He says, you know, it's just the two beers now. And then says, oh, so don't worry about it. He says, you'll be very happy to know both my brothers are fine. They're both well and fine. Says, but I'm only ordering two beers because I gave up drinking for Lent. <laughs> Boy, no control. Oh, that's great. <laughs> So, so if if any of the rest of you want to go out and get drunk, it's okay. Just don't do it during Holy Week. That's right. Just don't do it during Holy. Don't do it during Lent. That's not a good thing. Not a good thing. No, no, you can't during Lent. That's right. Because the Friday before is fine. Just not during Holy Week. Sure as yellowtail. <laughs> <laughs> you need to like have the bottle sitting behind you, you know. <laughs> So I don't want to give our viewers a bad, you know, impression here. I just enjoy. You don't want them to think you're drinking poor quality wine. Right, and this is the only glass. This is it. The, my <laughs> one for the day, uh, and it's red, which is good for the heart. So you know, it's... water from the tap, filtered. 
that Delaware water. Best water I ever it's had was in Springfield, <laughs> Massachusetts. So they had really good water out there. But I don't know. Anyhow, let's let's move. Well, while I was talking about Catholics, let's let's talk about uh, adding. <laughs> I think drunkenness and gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins. So let's talk about the other seven de- uh, seven deadly deadly sins. Okay. Well, no, drunkenness isn't the original seven deadly sins. It was gluttony for anybody that's trying to do all seven. Um. <laughs> Are lust, gluttony, avarice, sloth, anger, envy, and pride. Right. And drunkenness would be considered part of uh, gluttony. Gluttony, yeah, true. So, okay. So um, now there's a new set of uh, a modern seven. This is like Seven Deadly Sins 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking Seven Deadly Sins 2000. <laughs> like Knight Rider 2000? That's right. Hey, that was good to watch. I enjoyed watching that. Well, yeah, that one was good, but no, I mean, the one that was just on, but there was a Knight Rider 2000, which was different. Yep, I remember that one. The head, uh, you remember that one? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because that, that had a red car. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, they are um, uh, 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 polluting genetic engineering, being obscenely rich, hello, Bill Gates, drug dealing, abortion, pedophilia, but I guess other pornography is okay, and causing <laughs> social injustice. Yep. So um, even though Bill Gates like gives like millions or billions of dollars in charity, um, they're the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. You know, I mean, they give away money like crazy. And in fact, what was it? Uh, Warren Buffett, who's actually richer than Bill Gates now. Um, he's the richest man in the world. He basically gave his money to Bill and Melinda Gates and said, here, give this away. So, so, so but it's still, a, it's still, um, being that rich is, yeah. is still a mortal sin. Mortal sin sins. Hell. Now, it's interesting because those are, those are deadly sins. Abortion is one of the deadly sins. And yet, mortal, uh, yeah, mortal, uh, other mortal sins, uh, murder, contraception, contraception? Perjury, yep. adultery, Man, and lust. You go right to hell. The road to pa- the road to hell is paved in latex, man. Does that have something to do with uh, 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 St. Patrick back there? Is he still oh, looking at you? <laughs> I should probably choose that. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. Here's my new one. Oh, you okay. like that one? Yeah. That's the Pope of Teen. Okay. But, uh, you know, it's... it's... That, that hat's called a Saturno. A Saturno. Because it looks like the planet Saturn. Ah, I was thinking yeehaw. I'm not making that up. Well, yeah, it's also for when the Pope wants to play cowboy. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, you and, um, uh, here, let this, 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 me move my picture here out of the way. There, I'll move over here. Now people can have him in his little red cowboy hat there. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I know I'm not sure about this contraception thing. Yeah, but the road to hell is paved with birth control pills. I don't know. <laughs> Any monkey business is ill advised. Um, yeah. It was Pope well, Gregory the Great, by the way, who uh, uh, and uh, Dante's Inferno that has lust, gluttony, avarice, law, anger, greed, envy, and pride as the seven deadly sins, uh, which of course are also immortalized in um, Shazam comic books. As the, the seven great enemies of man, there on the wall is Billy Batson's going down to meet the wizard Shazam. So that's how I've learned them. <laughs> and I just learned by listening to another podcast um, this past week that Shazam is one of the few uh, 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 TV shows that has never been converted to DVD. Hmm. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, the seven holy virtues are chastity, abstinence, temperance, diligence, patience, kindness, and humility. Oh, goody! So, my question is: is why? What's wrong with Paul's, you know, works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, you know, those things. I mean, you know, kind of could have just. And anyway, back to this. Personally, uh, I like um, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Ah, okay. 
It's the Scout Law. I mean, I don't know. Some of it just seems a little bit, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, silly. Uh, but, I mean, one guy makes perfect sense. You know, I uh, who was this one? Um, Bishop Gianfranco Garotti, head of the Apostolic Penitentiary, said, You offend God not only by lying, blaspheming, stealing, or coveting your neighbor's wife, but also by ruining the environment, carrying out morally debatable scientific experiments, or allowing genetic manipulations which alter DNA or compromise embryos. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, and I agree with that. Um, at the same time, though, the problem here is when you pick out particular sins and say these sins are worse than these other sins. I got a bad feeling about this. And... <laughs> Frankly, that's what leads to uh, people nailing themselves to trees to try to get rid of those sins. Yeah, we're in trouble. Hey, but you know, I mean, I, some of this I, I really like. He said that hedonism and consumerism had even invaded the bosom of the church itself, deeply undermining the Christian faith within and undermining the lifestyle and daily behavior of, of believers. I have no idea what that meant. Yeah. You know. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I see that up here. I mean, you know, I, you know, I mean, around here, the people, you know, live in, you know, two, three million dollar homes. And I got members who live in one, you know, and it, uh, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and materialism is just so easy. So, mm-hmm. it, 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 you know, I really do uh, understand where he's coming from, uh, which is, I think, the importance of, of teaching good stewardship. And, you know, teaching humility and things like that. I mean, that's, that's part of what we want to be about. But you're right. that The problem making this distinction is it's almost, a, well, I might, but at least I don't. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Yeah. Well, you know, I looked down this list, and I'm certainly not obscenely rich. I leave that to Jim. <laughs> and, um, Thank you. I haven't, dealt, <laughs> I haven't dealt drugs. I have never had an abortion. I hope not. And never will. <laughs> uh, that was a different story that was posted to our site about the man who's pregnant. Yeah. yeah no, but um, what about that? What a, thank you, George Bowenkel. Uh But what about um, contraception yeah. there? Oh, yeah. I, I've done that one. <laughs> Sorry. When, <laughs> when the doctor told my wife that three's enough because uh, her body really couldn't handle another C-section, I um, said, well... Um, then we better make Too sure. Too much uh, information here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling you how. Well, okay, okay. Anyway. So, so what about the lust part of it here? Are, 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 are you there with Jimmy Carter and, you know, the adultery in the heart thing? Uh, you don't I have remember, a beautiful wife. You don't remember that, do you? No, no, I was really young. Yeah, you would have been really, you've been about six years old. Yeah, that was his famous Playboy interview, and he says, yeah, I've, I've committed adultery in my heart. So, many times. What he said. So, uh, I'm like, I was, that, that was, was like, this is the beginning of too much information of the, for, for the presidents in their lives. We don't need to know this. But anyway, um, yeah. But yeah, the thing is that, you know, but there's so many things we could say we haven't done, you know. Mm-hmm. I've, I've never caused I, I'm social not a injustice, either. whatever that means. See, I think they put pedophilia in there just as a, as kind of a, a PR move. I mean, cause like, where, you know, where is pedophilia mainly a problem? Oh, <laughs> among a whole bunch of priests. But, <laughs> well, he said that right it's there. It's not like it's real common. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, he said... They came right out and said it. Yeah, he said that two mortal sins which continued to preoccupy the Vatican were abortion, which offended the dignity and rights of women, and pedophilia, which had even infected the clergy itself, and so had exposed the human and fragile institutional fragility of the church. So, yeah, they, they're mm-hmm. real obvious that, yeah, that, that's put in partly the PR move there. Yeah, and th- th- that kind of bothers me. Anytime you're going to come out with the sort of doctrinal statement... If it's a PR statement, eh. I mean, it's not like I'm saying that pedophilia is good, but at the same time, um, why did it end on, on, a, on such a very short list? 
why that? You know, you know, because I'm looking at this and going, okay, I'm not obscenely rich, but let's talk about consumerism. You know, I mean, let's face it, we're all guilty of that. And I mean, anybody that's, if you're watching this on your computer, that means you've got a pretty decent uh, uh, processor or, or else you've got a, you know, an iPod or, or, or whatever that, you know. I mean, I I can't even watch this video on my computer. I'm using my wife's, but of course, what does that say? We've got you know two computers between the two of us. Our kids have them too, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, it would be a lot easier not for you and I not to be so materialistic if Apple didn't come out with such great stuff. Yeah, it's their fault. That's Blame right. Steve Jobs. And uh, of course, you know, they're, and they're he used to be there, a Missouri uh, Synod Lutheran too. They're they're just out there, you know, uh, tempting us. It's their fault. Yeah. So, but anyway, I don't know. You know what the neat thing is about these seven deadly sins, though? There is one powerful forgiveness that covers all sins. Oh, very nice, Blaine! Mm-hmm. So, and, and there is nothing that we can do that can separate us from the forgiveness and love of Christ. Uh, I'm, I, I'm preaching this Sunday on the gospel reading, and most of the time we always, I always preach on Thomas and doubt and that kind of stuff, but this week I, I came up with a kind of different approach to it. I've been thinking about, when they, Jesus showed up, you know, when you're in trouble as a kid, you always want to say, oh my God, what are my parents going to say to me? You know, right? I mean, you know, and, and, and I got to wondering, you know, when Jesus showed up, first thought of the disciples, What's he going to say to us? You know, you know, we, we left him, or Peter, I denied him, or Thomas, I doubted him. And, mm-hmm. and what do we sometimes go, you know, I feel really guilty. What's God think of me now? What would God say to me if God could get in front of me right now? And God was there. And what was the only thing he said? Peace to you. Peace be to you. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, and uh, uh, here, receive the forgive, receive the Holy Spirit, and you go out and forgive people. And share with them my forgiveness. Brother Thomas here, touch, believe, have faith. That's what he says to us. Trust in me. Trust in my forgiveness. Peace to you. You're forgiven. That's what he says to, yeah. to, to, to the deserters, to the deniers, to the doubters, to the people who do the seven deadly sins, who come to him repent. He says, peace to you. Yeah. So now that I've written your sermon for Sunday, you know, you can... Nah, I'm preaching on the epistle. Oh. I haven't worked out how yet. <laughs> I was going to preach on the, the Acts lesson, and then uh, I realized that it was Thursday at 4.30, and Friday's my day off, and I hadn't really started yet, like on the, my research and stuff. And I said, well... And I, I hadn't even translated it, and I always translate first because it helps me get into the text. And so I went, well, I preached on the epistle back in 02. I can grab those notes and <laughs> do it again. So I still, have to, I still have to write the sermon, but the research has done that one. So there's this Lutheran, there's this Methodist, and there's this Baptist. And we were talking about how they wrote their sermons. And the... Uh, Baptist said, well, you know, he says, I like to really get started on it. You know, Monday, Tuesday, I take Mondays off. And so Tuesday, and I, and I like to look it up in the original Greek, and I like to spend my time uh, translating it, and I like to do a lot of research and find all these really great illustrations and stuff. And by Thursday, I have my first draft done, and, and then I look over it, and I, I edit it through, and then by, by uh, Friday, I write my final draft, and then on Saturday, I, 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 I practice it a couple times, so I'm ready to do it on Sunday. And the Methodist goes, man, you know, I, I do a lot of work. I, I don't do quite that much. He says, um, but uh, he says, I, I usually get started on, like, on Thursday. And, you know, and I'll look through it in a couple English Bibles and stuff and see some things that there. And I'll look up some other stuff. And uh, But then Saturday evening, I like to write it. I, after my wife goes to my wife goes to bed early or something, and about, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I'll sit down and I'll start writing it. And I'll get it done, and that way, when I wake up Sunday morning, it's really kind of fresh in my mind, and I can play with it a little bit during that preaching. I really, you know, kind of do it that way. 
the in the ether and just kind of looks at them both kind of puzzled and just kind of shaking his head not sure what to do and he goes I just got one question for you guys they go what's that what do you do during the sermon hymn that's how Jim uh, writes his sermons <laughs> never I never look back darling it distracts from the now I uh <clears throat> I make them up as I go along. Anyway. <laughs> oh, you should see me practicing for that Easter Sunday thing. Because it was different every time. Because I never wrote a script for it. Oh. The only reason I write scripts is because I, I play with words so much. And I, I really try to come... And I, if I don't do it, I don't think of how to write different words and stuff. But, oh, well. No, that was very good. I didn't think he'd scripted it. Um, oh, we're sure, well, as long as we're dealing with the Roman Catholic Church, let's, might as well deal with, uh, 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 Pope Palpatine's uh, other thing he's talking about doing right now, and that is rehabilitating our hero. I, I thought rehabilitate was kind of a strange word. That must be one of those technical, uh, theological terms. Yay, Martin Luther. Um, Good old Martin Luther. Yay, Martin Luther. He's our man. Caused quite a schism when he wrote his catechism. Gay Martin Luther, he's our man. <laughs> you ever seen songs like that? No. Nope. <laughs> no, this is our songs from from Austin, Concordia, Missouri. Gay Martin Luther, yay, uh, yay Martin Luther, go Martin Luther, yay Martin Luther, he's our man. Caused quite a fire when he called the Pope a liar. Yay Martin Luther, he's our man. I thought maybe that was your sermon hymn. <laughs> For Reformation. <laughs> Boy, no control. Yeah. Um, I'll, do, I'll do our audience the, 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 the favor of not singing it for them. Hey, man, we could go viral with that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Be like chocolate rain. I was thinking more the uh, transubstantiation expialidocious song there. Oh, okay. yeah. I saw okay. a couple viral videos of that out there. And no, folks, this is not the wine talking. I am just, you know, in a very <laughs> jokey, happy, go like the mood this week. Um, hey, the Pope is... Yellow is... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The Pope's going to argue that Luther, who was condemned of rebelling against church authority, did not intend to split Christianity, but wanted to rid the church of corruption. Well, duh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Took you 500 years to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. When Martin Luther posted the 95 Theses on the Wittenberg door, all right, his goal was to talk to other theologians about indulgences and, and a few other issues, but mainly about indulgences that, that he really had a lot of questions and, and really wanted to debate these issues. That's why he originally wrote him in Latin, um, because it was a language that only the, the the church authorities could understand, and professors and people like that. And the uh, <clears throat> problem was somebody got a hold of it and translated it into German and sent it off to Gutenberg uh, and his printing press. And uh, all of a sudden, these things were being distributed in the vernacular all over Germany. <laughs> And uh, and things just sort of snowballed from there. Well, I, although I mean, there's a lot of things that played. There's a there was a rise in nationalism, and a lot of the Germans are getting ticked off of their money going over the mountains to Rome. I mean, there were yep. just a lot of different things that all came together. It you know it was it wasn't strictly a theological thing at all, but uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, things kind of snowballed from there, and uh, and Pope Leo the tenth, the Pope of the time, was not exactly. You know, he was not Cardinal Ratzinger by any stretch of the imagination. He, 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 you know, was very vain, um, uh, had at least two mistresses, you know, had a couple of mistresses running around the, the Vatican. Uh, and he was, the, the, I think he made the very famous quote of, God created the papacy, so let's enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> You know, and and basically bankrupted it with the, the um, by you know some of the great works of art of Michelangelo and uh, 
uh, and, and the creation of St. Peter's. And, of course, that was what caused them to have to do the indulgences in order to raise the money to build and to pay for all that. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So when you see the, you know, the Sistine Chapel and all that kind of stuff, um, those those great paintings, <laughs> those were financed up with indulgences. Mm-hmm. I mean, something you don't think about when you look at those. Well, when I walked through it, I mean, that was the. It, it, it's, it's if you've never walked through St. Peter's Basilica, it is absolute breathtaking. It really, is. I I walked through there when I was in high school, and I just like, I was just in awe at it. You know, and an odd Sistine Chapel. The whole thing was gorgeous. But yeah, at the time, you know, <clears throat> going to Lutheran High School and stuff, thinking, okay, so this is what a few, you know, thousand indulgences will buy you. Uh, not a bad way of doing it. You're in Lutheran High School and you went on a field trip to the Vatican? Uh, no, actually, I was in Lutheran High School and uh, my brother was in Germany in the Army and went to go visit him and we took a trip down to Rome uh-huh. by bus. But it was a it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a neat it was a neat experience to go through there. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I like this. The idea of the Pope and his researchers is that Luther had more Catholic views than history has judged. Well, you know, if you spend some time reading the Augsburg Confession, they keep arguing that you know that mm-hmm. that we have our disagreements here, but. You know, we don't see ourselves as, you know, outside the church by any means. Matter of fact, this is what the church has always said. Uh, right. And they constantly went back to what the church had said pre- previously. And, uh, you know, but this is where we this is where we have our disagreements and things like that. Now, I <clears throat> there's always been an argument about this. There's an argument about this. Is, did Lutheranism see itself as a separate church? Or did Lutheranism see itself as a movement, a reform movement within the church Catholic? Yeah, I, th- I think it was the latter. I mean, if you read the Augsburg Confession, a lot of people have referred to it as the Declaration of Independence of the the um, Protestant Reformation. But really, that wasn't the intent. Really, what they were saying is, look, we're more Catholic than you guys are. Knock it off. Right. Let's get back to what the church has always taught instead of coming up with all kinds of new stuff. And, yeah. you know, <clears throat> some of our <clears throat> brethren in Detroit, Michigan, to the contrary, um, you know, the the church was quite, you know, content to, you know, continue bishops and continue those, those, those that Episcopal order. Uh, they made it very clear that, um, you know, though they didn't have to, they had no intention of uh, dropping the historic liturgy. Uh, that was, you know, part of their culture and that was part of who they were and they, they were going to reform it. Uh, Luther's was, in the words of child, Charles Porterfield Kraut, a conservative reformation. You know, and mm-hmm. uh, now, I think by the time that the um, the formula of Concord, they definitely it had was no longer just a movement. At that point, it was definitely an established religious identity separate from. Uh, well, because they figured out by then that there was no way that it was ever going to. I mean. You have the Counter Reformation in the Roman Church and the Council of Trent and all that kind of stuff, and I mean, where they just said, Rome said, nope, nope, not going to do it, and so I said, all right, well, that's fine. You guys go and you know play cowboy. And <laughs> <laughs> but you know the. Um, yeah, I, I'm sure it would make Luther quite happy to know that this uh, his, his his expulsion from the Roman Catholic Church is going to be you know repealed now. Um, he didn't care at the time anyway. You know, as I recall, <laughs> you know he ripped it up and burned it. Yep, yep, a nice fire. And uh, the, the, the the papal decree exerge domine, uh, arise, O Lord! A wild boar has run loose in your vineyard. He didn't care a bit. You know, uh, he realized that meant nothing to him, and uh, thought it was a bunch of papal bull. That's right. So that was about it. So, so um, they're also planning to complete the rehabilitation of Galileo, um, which I thought that that was all taken care of. <laughs> These things take time. So, what about John Huss? He's probably next on the list. Okay. And then maybe Are John they going to unburn him? And, um, 
Uh, who has a few of the other ones? They, 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 uh, maybe John Calvin will be up there too. So, did they ever move, uh, remove Hitler from the list of defenders of the faith? Uh, that I don't know. But I think Henry VIII is still on it. <laughs> I'm sure he appreciated that. I'm sure he did too. So, one guy that's not on that list? Our buddy Jeremiah Wright. <laughs> Now, this has been all over uh, the news, and um, you're probably sick of hearing it, but it's a major story, and so I thought it was important that we talk about it. Um, he says, there's a man... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Um, there's a man here who can take this country in a new direction. His name is Jesus... No, no, wait. It, I mean, his name is Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, who's he preaching? <laughs> I, I, was it St. Paul said uh, uh, we preach nothing but Christ and Him crucified? Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. Now, okay, we have a law here in Massachusetts that your property taxes cannot go up each year any more than by, than by two and a half percent. So it's called Proposition Two and a Half. And thus, the town overrides it. And the, the school system here in Randolph is hurting big time. It is flat funded for like six years. Uh, they're they're, they're going to have to eliminate all the sports. They're going to do all kinds of stuff next year. So they're, they we have a proposition two and a half, two and a half override. And, and my wife and I are supporting it strongly. Um, <clears throat> and so we're going to vote in favor of it. Yes, we're voting to raise our own taxes. Which is all well and good. Then I was reading today uh, in, in the local paper, it says that uh, the Catholic priest uh, here in town has been encouraging his parishioners to, to support the override. And I'm like, Thus says the Lord. I just like, he is risen. Support the override. <laughs> Jesus yeah. wrote in he Jerusalem. Risen indeed. Oh, yes. And they were shaking palm branches <laughs> and voting for the Proposition 2.5 override. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm just well. looking, like, what does this have to do with the gospel? You know? Uh, so it's the same thing here, you know? Uh, oh, oh, oh. And he's oh, in trouble about What this has way. to do with the gospel? He compared Obama's upbringing to Jesus at the hands of the Romans. There you go. <laughs> But is it, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it was, yeah, and, 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 uh, was it, was it this I read about it? Yeah, that, yeah, uh, he's, he's getting some trouble because of that, uh, with, with the, uh, with, the, because of, with the IRS, and then also because, uh, well, he spoke to the United Church of Christ with 10,000 people there, and Obama spoke to them, and he had, you know, 40 campaign workers working around the place. But anyway, hey, I gotta say something. I think Jeremiah Wright does have a very good term of phrase here. You know, I mean, this guy knows how to preach. I just love some of this stuff. Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> Hillary's married to Bill, and yeah, Bill's I'll... been good to us. No, he ain't. Bill did us just like he did Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> he was riding dirty. <laughs> Wouldn't you oh, love to man. stand up at your pulpit and say something like that? <laughs> You know, my, my favorite illustration, I think I've mentioned this one on here. This is one I can use on this show, but I can't use, uh, I, I would never use it in the pulpit. Um, and that is, the uh, pastor stands up in the, um, in the, the pulpit and he says, there are billions of people out there that are, um, that, that do not know Christ and are going to hell, are, are, are going to hell. And none of you give a damn about it. And what's worse than that, right now you're more concerned about the fact that I just said give a damn from the pulpit than you are about those billions of people that are going to hell. Yep. I heard that one from Leroy, Leroy Biesenthal. He's be the director of evangelism for the Synod. Yep. Uh, I know Beasy. You know Beasy, so uh, he's a good guy. Uh, but... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, 
Now, if you read, though, I mean, you, I, I disagree with Wright. But to a certain extent, you got to take him in context. And that is the context of black liberation theology. And uh, he's a disciple of James Cone. And you read what Cone says, and then you understand where he's coming from. If you read black liberation theology, you understand where he's coming from. A mixture of the gospel and Marxism. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and plus, uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he's never, you know, uh, hidden the fact that his church is an Afrocentric church. Yeah. Yeah. Whites need not apply. You know, and, uh, I was thinking that. What's, you know, what's that about? There's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. Well, it you know, says I guess it doesn't Jew stay black nor white. It doesn't, doesn't say anything about Africans. <laughs> I guess. Um, at the same time, you know, we, you know, there, there is a heritage, unfortunately, you know, of, of, of just really bad stuff about blacks in America. You know, mm-hmm. even in the church. You know. Um, and, and, and it's very sad and, and hurtful. I mean, even in our own Lutheran denomination, even in Lutheran Church Missouri Senate. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, 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 Brian Clancy. He used to be the director of the Board for Black Ministry, Ministry Services in the Senate. He was a pastor in uh, North Carolina in the 1960s, like 65, 66. And um, <clears throat> one of the pastors died in his circuit. And this white church would not allow him to go into the funeral. He had to sit in the parsonage. And two of wow. the other white pastors were with him. Uh, we had a separate but equal seminary in Cordia, Conover, North Carolina, which was not nearly as nice as St. Louis or even Springfield. But that was where the black preachers were. Huh. So... There is, even for us, some, some nasty history. Uh, on the story of Brian Clancy, and it was told to me, by the way, by a pastor who was there in that circuit and was there that day. But uh, it was uh, about a year later. Something had, They were at something, and a member of that church stood up and publicly apologized to uh, Pastor Clancy and said, well, what we did was absolutely wrong. Please forgive us. They were able to reconcile eventually. But there's, there's some sad history there. Yeah, uh, there is. But there also comes a point where you have to ask for, where you have to, not only, I mean, I, I think that our nation has repeatedly asked for forgiveness for what has happened before. And there comes a point where you have to forgive. Mm-hmm. And Pastor Wright is not willing to do that. Well, he is that's a problem. Anger. Uh, but again, you know, some other things going on there too that, you know, it sounds, you know, I mean, some of this stuff sounds kind of conspiracy theory. You know, uh, AIDS is created by the government. Crack cocaine was created by the government. Okay, that's, that's a little tough. To us, that sounds a little kooky. It, you have to be black. Can you remember that in the 19, in World War II, you know, a bunch of black men were infected with syphilis by the government. This is madness. You know, that it doesn't sound quite so insane to them. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to apologize for him. I think he's absolutely wrong, I think, and especially preachers from the pulpit is absolutely wrong. Um, but, you know, I'm trying, I really tried to try to put myself in, in, in his shoes and to, to understand, you know, where he's coming from. And if you understand black liberation theology, it's very easy anyway. But, uh, yeah. you know, some of the conspiracy stuff, I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't, you know, for, for, it sounds far-fetched to me and you. But, you know, they weren't white, 40 white guys who were, you know, intentionally infected with syphilis. No, but uh, I'm, I'm looking at this other quote. We're deeply involved in the importing of drugs, the exporting of guns, and the training of professional killers. We believe in white supremacy and black inferiority, and we believe it more than we believe in God. We conducted radiation experiments on our own people. We care nothing about human life if the ends justify the means. And yet he's supporting Barack Obama, who 
um, is pro-abortion. Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. Uh, human life, hello? You know, we just, on Easter, the 4,000th American soldier died in Iraq, right? But there's more babies killed than that every day in America. And we don't bat an eye about that. There never was much hope. Well, if you Person's understand his, no his denomination, uh, the United Church of Christ, I mean, that's, that's part of their, you know, that they, they are they are a socially liberal organization. Uh, mm-hmm. And they're not going to see abortion as, a, as that big of an issue. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. sad. It really is. Um, the other thing is I can't read the rest of this quote from him without putting an explicit tag on our... Um, on our podcast, and uh, which and, and I thought this was really ironic for uh, Fox News that reported this story. It's got the the quote written out, and it says, "Click here to hear an audio clip of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright Jr. Warning: contains offensive language. Oh, like what you printed on the previous line without any kind of warning." What's interesting so, to me is that. Uh, yeah, is that we have that, you know, is, is that he, 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 you know, this using of, of vulgarity and profanity from the pulpit. You know. Uh, yeah. I mean, even even his wonderful line, he's doing to us what he did to Monica Lewinsky. I mean, even that would be more than I would ever do for a pulpit. Yeah. You know, for me, it's like trying to, you know, the Bible uses this this husband imagery. And really, um, and I think we've talked about this before, but um, this this husband imagery is with with Christ is um, you know we talk about sexual intimacy and stuff like that. You know, we can say the closeness in sexual intimacy is just a you know it's it's a, it's, it's just a taste of the the closeness that um, that we'll have with Christ. And but even drawing that parallel, which like you read the book Song of Solomon, and it's I mean it's all over the place. But even drawing that parallel, I'm very uncomfortable doing from the pulpit, just because I know that talking about something like that is going to make people fidget in their seats. They're not even going to hear the message. All they're going to hear is, oh, pastors comparing sex to Jesus, you know, and and they're they're not going to they're not going to be able to really hear the message. And you now here he's spouting profanity from the pulpit. Are people hearing the message? You know, what about the kids that are sitting there? Yeah, you know, and then they go around spouting profanity, and oh, pastor said it. <laughs> Two words: therapy. I have to, I have to teach my confirmation kids that it's okay to say "damn" if you use it in the proper context. But it's still it's it's still a very upsetting thing. Oh well. Hey, shout out here to George real quick. We've got a couple of good notes from him. I really appreciate that. Uh, also to Jeff, who gave Dale an Academy Award for his performance there. And, uh, uh, actually, an Academy Award was an Oscar for his performance there as, as Peter. And uh, so I want to highlight that. But you know what we got this week? We got <laughs> our first voice message. You know, I thought it had died. I, I thought it was gone. And then we get this voice message. Let me see if I can get it to play on here. I think um, I think Jim's going to disappear for a minute uh, while I play this. If I can find the the setting. Uh, oh, I just had it. Darn it. Yeah, we finally get a voice message. Go figure. Here we go. Message for you, son. Hey, bastards. It is Dave calling from Wisconsin, the winter wonderland over by the Green Bay area. And I wanted to be somebody who would at least call your line after listening to you guys say that nobody calls, nobody calls. I figured somebody better call. So I called. I catch you guys every week on my iPod. You accompany me home from uh, evening college classes I'm taking. And, hey, it's great listening to you guys. I like hearing what you've got to say. I appreciate the time you take to explain some of the reasoning, 
interesting and I enjoyed the fun you have, even with Jedi religion. So, hey, thanks, guys. You're doing a great job. Jim, glad you got a new microphone because you really didn't sound that good. But now you sound almost as good as Dale. <laughs> guys, have a blessed Easter, and I thank you for doing your program. Goodbye. <sighs> See how easy that was, folks. You, you could be broadcast on this on this podcast. Yeah, because now he renewed the line, and it's good for thirty days. <laughs> and that was uh, that was dated uh, March nineteenth. So you've got a little bit of time to keep it alive. <laughs> so if you'd like to call us, you can. You call our voicemail line just like that, and the number is 206-350-4749. Or if you're bashful and don't want to hear your voice, you can email us. At podcast at crossfadenews.com. Or if you're watching the video on iTunes, and if I remember to... I, I've been pretty good about remembering. There have been a couple times that I started encoding it. There was one time I had started encoding it, gone, gone to bed, and then I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep, and I realized, oh, I forgot to put the link in the video, <laughs> and so I got up and <laughs> canceled it and put the link in there. So if you're watching this uh, video in iTunes, you can go and uh, just click on the screen, and it'll take you to our feedback page, and, um, and you can send us a message that way. You know, Bob. Email. With that. Oh, and and speaking of, speaking of iTunes, I have a request. All right? If you enjoy the show, eh, heck, even if you don't, although if you're still watching it now, you probably do. Um, which is why we say this at the end of the show. <laughs> Go to iTunes, and you can find the iTunes link right on the front page of our website, CrossfeedNews.com. And post a review, either in the audio or the video, doesn't matter. But we we have, I think we only have one review between the two feeds, and it would so make my day if a few people would go and post a review um, of the show. It doesn't have to be much, but just to you know, just to put it out there, um, man, that would be awesome. And the one so review we request. have was not very complimentary, so it'd be nice to have no, a nice it's, one. It's not. And it's really old. We've gotten so... Well, no, I guess we haven't gotten that much better since then. Um, but I think we're offending better people now. <laughs> That's probably true. So, anyway, we need to end this up. Remember, folks, Shiraz by Yellowtail. Very good wine. Um... And um, other than that, have a very good, blessed um, week after Easter here, and continuing Easter joy to all of you. He is risen! He is risen indeed. Take care. God bless. Good night, everybody. God bless.